Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. This is the uh, 10th uh, Sunday after Pentecost. We're glad you're able uh, to join us here in worship and also uh, those who are able to join us online for our live stream worship. We're glad to have everyone uh, with us uh, this day. A uh, special welcome to the family and friends uh, for the baptism of Timothy Perry Bolofsky. We're glad to have you with us uh, this morning. Made the safe journey from uh, Virginia and from Florida. Uh, glad to have you with us uh, today and a special uh, blessing to be able to celebrate uh, uh, Timothy, uh, Timothy's baptism this morning. Just a few announcements as we begin our worship service regarding upcoming uh, Bible study opportunities. Uh, this evening we'll start a new online uh, Bible study, a live Zoom uh, Bible study. I never thought I'd ever say those words together. But Zoom, uh, Zoom Bible study will begin uh, this evening uh, at 7 o'clock. Uh, information about if you'd like to be part of that is printed in the bulletin. Essentially, uh, if you don't have that registration information yet, just email me uh, this afternoon and I can set you up. That uh, email is listed in the bulletin as well. And then we begin uh, our Life Light a Bible study, in-depth Bible study, looking at the Gospel of Mark. Uh, that will begin on uh, Thursday, uh, September 10th. We'll offer the morning uh, session at 10 o'clock as well as the evening session at 7 p.m. And a third option, uh, this, uh, this session uh, will be an online recorded uh, version of the LifeLight lessons. Uh, so please, if you're interested in LifeLight, uh, see that bulletin insert. Please fill us out as soon as you can. Get that to us. Uh, we can get those uh, sooner rather than later. That way we'll know how to uh, space out our, our groups uh, during the, these next uh, few months of LifeLight. On the other side is the adult discipleship class registration. This is for, for all of our members, but especially for those who are maybe looking to uh, join our, our church, our congregation. Uh, this uh, 12-week class will start on Monday evenings on September 14th. Uh, so please see those uh, bulletin announcements regarding uh, these Bible study opportunities. Uh, as most of you are aware, the uh, Evansville Lutheran School starts their uh, new academic year uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're very uh, thankful to have our school, and we know that there's a lot of challenges uh, presented with starting a new uh, school year. So we just ask you as congregation members, family and friends, just to uh, pray for um, our school as they navigate these uh, challenging times. Uh, pray for our faculty and teachers, uh, and uh, also pray for our students and families. Um, mainly just that we all stay healthy and that we'll be able to get uh, the learning that needs to be done, that our kids can come here and, and learn and grow in their knowledge, but especially uh, hear uh, that wonderful good news of Jesus' uh, love. Uh, so uh, continue to pray for Evansville Lutheran School as we begin our, our school year uh, tomorrow. With that, uh, with those announcements, we, uh, we now continue with our worship service, and we begin uh, with the ringing of our bells.
congregation is invited to turn with us to the uh, blue worship insert for the service of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. our Lord commanded baptism, saying to his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written, The promise is for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. We also learn from the Word of God that we are all conceived and born sinful, and so are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Who brings this child to be baptized? How is this child named? Receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart. To mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, According to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan River of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Perry according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hear how our Lord Jesus Christ has opened the kingdom of God to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of this child into the family of our Father, let us with all the family pray the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. We join together in proclaiming the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the life of faith, which God our Father bestows in and through holy baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, yes I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
I gotcha. Timothy Perry Bolofsky, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. The candle on the altar reminds us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Perry, live always by the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy, and enter with him to the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. He's a good boy. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Timothy Perry Bolofsky the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that he is, as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, God has added Perry to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you in the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, who work with us in this year. And you, Timothy Perry Bolofsky, the Lord bless you in all your ways, from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Our service continues with confession absolution. Please stand. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. I sought the Lord, and He answered me. Those who look to Him are radiant. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May be seated. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when it made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? that it may, might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It is changed like clay under the seal, and its feature, features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the epistle reading from Romans chapter 10, Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. 
that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost, and cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having already confessed our Christian faith and our baptism service, our service now continues uh, with our next hymn, hymn number 765, God Moves in a Mysterious Way. Please be seated.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. This past week, my family and I, we've gone on some hikes, we've gone on some walks, and I've learned something about my children, that they share my same sense of humor. And they join me in singing as we walk of uh, this one song. It was a one-hit wonder. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who'd walk the thousand miles he thorn the land. Da 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 da. You know, sometimes I wish my children didn't have my sense of humor. They wouldn't sing that over and over and over again. Uh, but that song, it's a chorus from a song written and performed by the Scottish duo, The Proclaimers. They were late 80s, early 90s. It was a one-hit wonder. The verses, they are less than stellar with their composition, their words. The tune, it's simple. Actually, the, the brothers that wrote it said it took them less than 45 minutes to write and come up with the song. Uh, but I found out it has a catchy chorus because my kids still, when we're on a walk or a hike, da 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 like, oh, you are my children. Uh, anyway, the lyrics bring to question, how much are you willing to do for love? What lengths would you take in order to see and share your love? Would you walk 500 miles? Would you walk 1,000 miles? Or taking a cue from our gospel ring today, if you were able to, or if you could or would, would you walk on water? We see in our gospel ring for this day, Jesus was able to use his divine nature as the Son of God to show his love by walking out on the sea where his disciples were at. See, Jesus cared for his disciples greatly because they were being taken out to sea by the wind and the waves were battering their boat. Jesus wanted to be for them. He loved them. Jesus would go to great lengths to calm their fear and anxiety. Jesus would remind them of what they had to get them through this life and to remain with them into the next life. Faith. They had faith. For throughout the Gospel reading, the focus is always to keep Jesus as the central aspect of of the lives of the disciples of much as possible, and where that faith stemmed from. It came from Jesus Christ. He was the one who came to them where they were at. He was the one who commanded them on what to do. He was the one who would command the wind and the waves to cease. He was the one that instilled into them faith. But there's another event within the Gospel reading for this day that takes place that we like to focus on. We like to see what happens when we are consumed with what surrounds us. It's the event of Peter. Peter sees Jesus walking on the water and he figures, well, I should be able to do that too. Lord, can I come out on the water? Command me to come out and I'll do it. So the Lord commands Peter, come Peter starts walking on the water. But what happens to Peter? What happens when he takes that first step out on the water? Well, first, he was walking. Walking on the water towards Jesus, just like Jesus was walking towards him. But then, then Peter became distracted. He saw the wind and the waves coming upon him and being distracted by the ways of the world, what happens to Peter? He begins to sink. He sinks as he sees how the concern of this world try to overwhelm him instead of keeping his focus of faith on Jesus, his focus on the one who is right there in front of him, who's just an arm length away. Instead of focusing on Jesus, he sinks because he is overwhelmed thinking he could save himself. Instead of seeing his Savior, the one who does save him, is right there in front of him. And he would not let him perish. 
Yet the faith given to Peter by our Lord, it would remain for Peter throughout his life. That was a good learning experience. The Lord is not going to let you sink, Peter. The Lord has given you faith, and he would go out the rest of his life declaring and proclaiming the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the one way to heaven, the way to salvation. That is where life would come from. It came from Christ our Lord. Peter would even be reminded that even the wind and the waves that tried to overwhelm him couldn't overwhelm Jesus. They couldn't sink Jesus. Because Jesus is in control. Jesus gives faith. And so it is with us, brothers and sisters. We don't need to be out on a boat, though, in the middle of the sea to be overwhelmed by this world, do we? We don't need to try to walk on water to know what tries to sink us and lead us astray in this life and in this world. We live life every day being tossed to and fro by the ways of this world, being scared of what's going to happen to us next. What's going to come of us next? We turn on the news. We go on our computers. We get on our phones. What news is going to pop up next? What major catastrophe will strike? What are we going to hear from the doctor when we've been called in to come for a visit, a follow-up from our checkup? What's going to happen to us during this time of pandemic? What ca catastrophe will strike our world next? Will it be another hurricane? Will it be another natural disaster? Will it be a man-made disaster? What will happen? We walk in this world. We walk in this fallen world. And the storms of this world constantly try to engulf us. Constantly try to take our focus off of Christ. We wonder then, how will we ever keep ourselves safe from this world and this environment that we live in? What are we to do? The devil continually tries to get us to succumb and for us to drown in our own self-despair. Yet even when we are sinking, Jesus comes to us. And He remains with us through it all. He reminds us what we have to see us through those times of difficulty, those times of strife. He reminds us, you have faith. Even in those times when we have little faith and doubt, like the disciples did, like Peter did, Jesus reminds us as He did them, if you have just the faith of a mustard seed, that's faith. And guess what? Faith is faith. Walking in this world, we are not of this world, but we are confident in the faith of whose we are. We are the brothers and sisters in Christ. We are Christian. Followers of the one and only true God. Followers of the one who gave his life up for the whole world. He gave his life up to take away sin and to give us everlasting life. We are the ones of the Creator of the heavens and earth who set everything in motion and who continues to be active in this world. We are the ones of the Redeemer who came into this world to save this world, who came to even die on the cross for the Redeemer of this fallen world. We are the ones of the One, the true Holy Spirit, who calls us to live lives of holiness and righteousness and calls us back into the faith. The Old Testament reading from Job chapter 38, it has the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit calling back to Job, reminding them who He is, what He has done, and who God is. See, God the Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they have to remind Job Who's over all of creation? Who has been there since the beginning of time, even before time was? Who continues to be active in this creation and this world? And who is going to be there when your time in this world is up? It's the Almighty. The triune God. He's going to continue to be with you even then. Walking in faith in this world means we are also so mindful of Jesus will always be with us. Paul reiterates this point in the epistle reading for this morning from Romans chapter 10. But what does it say? 
The word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. And that word of the faith is what we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him for the dead, you will be saved. Notice what the central focus of our lives remains. It remains to be Jesus Christ. It remains to be that faith that He has instilled in us this day. He is the one who has saved us from sin, death, and the devil. But more than that, who remains with us throughout this life and in the life to come. Jesus didn't only die on the cross for us. He just didn't only die to take away our sin. He rose victoriously from the grave. He rose from the dead and He lives. He remains with us this very day until the very end of the age. The end of Matthew 28 reminds us, for our Savior upon leaving here, returning to that heavenly throne, reminds us, lo, I am with you. Not just sometimes, not just part of the time. I am with you always. Always. To the very end of the age, I will be with you. That is who Jesus is. That is what Jesus does. He is with us. To the very end of the age, even until that day of resurrection, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be with us. As we live, we live in the faith that He has provided. From those days where it seems like we just have that faith of a little of a mustard seed to those days where it seems our faith is great and nothing's going to knock us down. All those days, the constant remains the same. Faith. Faith is the bedrock of our life. As Ehrman Neumeister penned in the hymn that we will sing shortly, I know my faith is founded on Jesus Christ, my God and my Lord. This faith confessing Unmoved, I stand on His sure word. So what is this faith? Faith faith is this craft that I made at a VBS years ago. Many years ago. Focus on it. Sometimes if you don't focus right, you can't see what's there. But you have to look closely to see what word is the basis of our faith. Because when you focus, you see your faith is about Jesus. Sunday school answer, good job. Your faith is always about Jesus. Faith is keeping our eyes on Jesus, keeping our focus on Him. Not on the storms of this world, not on the storms of this life, but faith is keeping our eyes on Jesus. Faith is reading the Word and taking, for what, taking it for what it says. Faith is believing you and I are given comfort and hope through simple means attached with extraordinary promises. Faith comes through hearing. Hearing comes forth through belief. And that belief comes from hearing the Word. So where is this faith founded? Faith is found in the sure and certain hope of the Word of God that He provides for us. Faith. Faith. You got to see it firsthand this morning when Perry was there at that baptismal font, you saw God giving him faith. In the water and the Word, Perry now has faith. Because there, in the water and the Word, God has promised to be there with for Perry and with Perry throughout this life and even in the one to come. It's as simple as that. Faith is here as we are about to approach this very altar and we partake in the bread and the wine, which is a mystery beyond our comprehension, yet Holy Communion will take place here where we will receive in faith Christ's very body and blood. And as we receive the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, guess what? Upon that leaving, you hear what has happened in reception of receiving Christ's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. It's for the strengthening of your faith. For faith is there as the unswerving confession of Christ in this world. Of His suffering, His death, and His resurrection, it's paid the price for our sin. Faith is knowing that this life, it's not the end. We will live forever. We will be with the Lord. 
And on that last day, He will raise these perishable bodies to be imperishable. He will raise them to reunite our soul to be with our body, and our bodies will be like His glorious body. So we will live forever. Faith. It's in our worship as we confess alongside disciples and alongside one another, truly, You are the Son of God, Jesus. Throughout the day, I, I wear a Fitbit. How many of you wear a Fitbit or some fitness tracker? Raise, it, raise your wrist. Now shake it so you can get some steps in. There you go. I wear this Fitbit, and, and I don't know about yours, but mine reminds me if I don't get enough steps in on an hour, it buzzes me. It lets me know, you better get up and walk. Well, God-given faith is no different. It reminds me, I better get up and walk. Walk in the Word. Walk in that baptismal grace. Walk here being fed by the body and blood of our Lord. And yet, that God-given faith, it's completely distinct from a Fitbit mechanical tracker. Because God doesn't use a technology or a little mechanical device. Instead, God uses His Word and His sacraments for us to walk in that faith that He gives us. And we walk in that faith, trusting in the Lord, having our eyes and our minds focusing on what is most important in this life. We focus back on Jesus Christ. We focus on how He comes to us, how He is with us always. He will never leave or forsake us. He will be with us through the storms of this life and the problems of this world. When we walk in Jesus Christ, it becomes not a matter of counting how many steps we're taking like a Fitbit tracker. Instead, we walk in faith, keeping our focus on Jesus and seeing how truly blessed we are by what He gives us for this daily life. We are greatly blessed to see in this troubled and chaotic world, our Lord and our Savior gives us all that we need. He's given us salvation. He's given us forgiveness. He's given us life everlasting. In faith, we are reminded what great length and depth Jesus went to in order to, be, in order to save us from this world, from the evil that lies within it. And we know that in faith, when this world ends, when our time here on earth ends, it will not be the end for us. For through it all, faith remains. The love of Jesus Christ remains with us and in us. For what He, what Jesus instills, it will not fail, it will not cause us to fall, because we're walking in faith. We're walking with our eyes focused on Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. But when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost! They cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Amen. We continue as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 587, I Know My Faith is Founded.
stand for prayer. O Lord our God, your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may live by faith and not by sight. Teach us to keep our eyes on your Son, Jesus, at all times, that we may trust in your word amid the stormy seas of this mortal life, until you safely deliver us from all danger unto the eternal shores of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, we have no righteousness of our own, but only the righteousness of Christ, into which we have been clothed in our baptisms. Grant us grace that we may be faithful in every circumstance and bold in the confession of his saving name. Guard those who preach your word to us so that hearing we may believe and believing we may have everlasting life. Grant your blessings to our members, especially today we pray for Jacob Utley, James Utley, Katie Utley, and Aidan Dumas, Mariah Utley, and Peggy Utley. Also be with Timothy Perry Bolofsky, baptized this morning. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, we see the great need and ask, ask you to raise up those who will serve as pastors, teachers, missionaries, and in all church work vocations. Bless church planters and the younger congregations that they may endure. Bring hope and renewal to all struggling congregations and to the pastors who serve them. And do not let fear keep us from your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, we ask you to bless us, our nation, and those who lead us. Guide all elected and appointed civil servants in their judgments, that we may know justice in our land and peace among the nations. Make us especially mindful of those who need our special protection, the unborn, the aged, and the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, we pray for your blessing upon the schools where children learn, especially for the schools, universities, and seminaries of our own church, including our own Evansville Lutheran School. Guide the faculty and staff as they seek to serve our students and families in these challenging times. Give your blessings to all places where your people gather to teach and to learn your word. Help us to remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, we remember the sick, those who suffer, those troubled in mind, the grieving and the dying. Deliver them according to your will and grant them the comfort of your word in their time of affliction, that they may depend upon your mercy in every circumstance. Be with Susie Holsey, Jerry Leffler, Jim Kennedy, Vernon Wells, Mike Duncan, Leora Horst, Gwen Forrester, Gabe Toberman, Mark Kell, Rich Shoddy, and Bill Cronin. Also grant comfort to those who mourn, including Jim Morgan and family, after the death of his sister, Pat Stevens. May the good news of Jesus' resurrection bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord our God, thank you for the gift of marriage and family. Be with those who celebrate wedding anniversaries this week, including Tim and Kim Horst, Dave and Melanie Gross, George and Nancy McEwen, Craig and Stephanie Kolb, and Kevin and Sue Swank. Also grant joy to Bradley and Jennifer Gant and family after the birth of their son, Landon Barquette Gant. Hold this precious child in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, we pray you to be our light in darkness, our strength in weakness, our courage in fear, and our peace in distress. Speak to us by the voice of your word, that we may call upon you in the day of trouble and confess your saving name before all people. Hear us on behalf of ourselves and those whom we have prayed, even those we now name silently in our hearts. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 8 of our bulletins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We stand to sing the post-communion canticle. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.